Hello. I have wanted to make videos that will help people learn to draw or improve their drawing skills for a while now. The way I would like to do this is to show you how I draw. As well as teaching you how I draw, I also want to teach you new ways to see, giving you valuable tools that you can use in your own drawings. There are many different drawing styles and techniques out there, I think it's about finding the right one that works for you. The techniques I use and what I want to show you is about learning to see and stay in focus. It really helped me to improve my work and feel better about my drawing ability. This video is an introduction into how I draw. I plan to make more videos covering in greater detail some of the techniques I mention here. If you have any questions or would like me to cover anything, please leave it in the comments. I am going to use one of my previous time lapse videos, which I will leave a link to in the description below. I will also leave a link to the reference image that I am using. In the description, there is also a list of the equipment and materials that I am using. So first the paper. The paper I am using is Strathmore Bristol paper with a vellum surface, which I have cut to size. This is my favourite paper which I use for all my best drawings. I find it has the perfect balance of smooth texture but still holds enough of the pencil to create a deep tone. However, for beginners or for sketching I would use a more general drawing paper. I will leave a link in the description to the ones that I recommend. You'll also see a small oval piece of paper which I use to rest my hand. This is so I do not smudge my work, it can be any type of paper. I am using the same paper I draw with and have it cut into an oval because I am filming and do not want it to distract or cover my drawing. I find there are two different stages to drawing, outlining using lines and tone using tones and colours and that these relate to the different ways of seeing, one seeing edges and the other seeing masses. The artist Harold Speed goes into this in his book The Practice and Science of Drawing which is an interesting read but has a lot of theory. I'm going to be mentioning the artists, authors and books as I want to give credit to the people who have helped improve my drawing skills and shaped my drawing practice. You do not need to buy any of the books I mention, however I will leave a link in the description in case you would like to know more. So to begin, I start with outlining the edges. I'm using a 2H pencil and draw very lightly. It might be hard to see, but I do not want to go in too dark as this is a guide for putting in the tones and I do not want it to show through. It can be difficult starting a drawing, knowing where to place the first mark making sure it will fit on the paper. The most helpful advice I read was from Betty Edwards book, The Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, where she suggests choosing a section or an edge for all the other edges in the drawing to be compared to. Betty Edwards called this the basic unit. I have started with the edge on the left hand side. I start by looking at an edge and following it with my eyes. My hand and pencil then slowly follow the movement of my eyes. With practice this can be done in one continuous line but I want to make sure it is accurate so I am continually swapping from looking at the image to looking at my drawing. This does take some practice and I do not get this right every time. I would recommend taking your time, go really slowly and look. I found that once I got the hang of it, I really enjoyed it. I first used the hand follows the eye technique after I read it in Frederick Frank's book, The Zen of Seeing, Drawing as Meditation, and I have not stopped using it since. After drawing the outer edge, I look for and draw any inner edges. I follow the inner edge with my eye, comparing the lines that I am drawing's length and angle with the previous lines. You will also see I go back to the original line to compare and almost measure with my eyes and hands where to place the pupil. Another technique that I use for drawing and find it really helps is using negative space to draw. This is also mentioned in Betty Edwards' book, The Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Instead of looking at the object, I look at and draw the space around the object, the negative space. This helps because it gets you to look at what you are seeing and not what you think you are seeing, which can be two different things. I also find looking for shapes within the object can help. These shapes can be part of the object or can be changes in tones. I try to get the outline stage as accurate as possible and rub out any mistakes along the way. For erasing mistakes, I recommend using either a putty or a mono zero rubber. Okay, I will just speed this up. 
If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I will get back to you. Once I am happy with the outline, I start putting in the tones. First, I look at the reference image and see which are the dark areas, the pupil, and which are the light areas, the reflection. I like putting in the darkest areas first so I can easily compare the tones. For the darkest areas, I use a black Faber-Castell polychroma pencil crayon. From now on, I will just refer to this as a black pencil crayon. I like the deep matte tone I am able to achieve. If I try to achieve this with a dark graphite pencil such as 8B, there would be a noticeable shine. I recommend learning the properties of the pencils and papers you are using. Knowing what they can and cannot do will improve your drawings. You can also use carbon pencils, black ink and charcoal, but I prefer to use the black pencil crayon. As I have said before, there are many different techniques out there and it is about finding the right one that works for you. I start with the darkest areas, but do not go in too dark to begin with. Instead, I use a 4B mechanical pencil to shade the edges of the darkest areas. I swap between using a 2B and 4B wooden case pencil and mechanical pencil, depending if precision or areas of tone are needed. I then use the black pencil crayon for the darkest areas. Through trial and error, I have found that the black pencil crayon blends better into pencil than the pencil into the pencil crayon. As the pencil crayon, the Faber-Castell Polychroma pencil is oil-based and the other pencils I am using are graphite-based. So, pencil first, then pencil crayon, rather than pencil crayon first, then pencil. There are many different techniques people use for blending. I have seen artists use a blending stump, a cotton bud and a makeup brush. I prefer to build up and blend tones using small circles. I like how it really makes me focus on the drawing and gets me into the zone. As I have said before, it's about finding the right one that works for you. For the different tones, I work my way down through the different pencils, from 4B to 2B to HB. Using small circles to blend, I would start in the previous pencil's darker tone and fade out, making sure I stick to the outline. I would then repeat it using the next pencil and then the next pencil. For the lighter part and the highlight, I like to leave the whiteness of the paper to show through. I will just speed this up. I work my way around the drawing in sections, repeating this process working from dark to light. I look at each individual section of my drawing and then the drawing as a whole. I am checking to see that all the dark areas are the same tone and that all the light areas are the same tone. I will then adjust them, either making them darker if need be or lighter by using a putty or a mono zero rubber. Lastly, I draw the outer dark area using the black pencil crane and blending it into the 4B pencil. If you compare my drawing to the reference image, you will see some differences in the shape and tones. The reference image is for reference. I think it is important to look at your drawing and make sure it looks right. I changed the shape, making it look rounder as this would work better for my drawing. With tones, I think the most important thing is that they are relative to each other, that light logic is followed. Basically, that the lighting and tones make sense. This is my little introduction into how I draw. I hope you liked it and found it useful. I plan to make videos covering some of the techniques I have mentioned here. If there is anything in particular you would like me to cover or have any questions, then please leave them in the comments. If you have enjoyed it and would like more, then please like, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I next post. Thank you for watching.